and all the saints of God, we say praise the Lord again this afternoon. Not going to be before you long, but I uh, just want to call your attention very briefly to the third chapter of the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter number three. And the pastor made mention of a um, number of opportunities and engagements we have coming up, and I just thank the Lord. Uh, very humbled uh, by uh, this these opportunities. Nothing I love more than preaching the word of God. Hey, Amen. Love to preach God's word. Uh, love how the word of God uh, works in the lives of individuals. Hey, Amen. Had a was called upon last week to uh, to train some sixty sixty of our store managers across the state of Michigan for my job and um, it's supposed to be myself and three other district directors and we were supposed to meet for seven hours and then each of us take an hour and train and um, my session ended up lasting four hours and the other district directors were mad that I took so long but um, I told them I'm a preacher. You can give me a microphone, I'll go all day. Y'all didn't want to take the microphone. I, had a, I took the microphone and I said, I can go all day. Uh, they were mad. Um, and their store managers now want to, want to work under my district. But I told them I don't have any room for you. Uh, but. We thank you, praise God, because even in teaching and training, uh, there's nothing I love more than the preaching the word of God. Amen. Word of God can do for us what um, a motivational sp speech or a seminar can never do. And there's the power of the word of God can change an individual's life. And uh, there is no greater force uh, on this earth than the Holy Ghost and the power of the word of God. Philippians chapter number three, and I'd like to read verses number 10 down through verse number 21, and I do apologize in advance for reading such a long, lengthy uh, text of scripture, uh, but it reads accordingly and says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded and if in anything ye be otherwise minded God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless whereto we have already attained let us walk by the same rule let us mind the same thing. Brethren be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Can we say amen? Like to note in particular the words that are recorded in verses number 14 uh, verses number 13 and 14. I'd like for us to read those two verses together loud in unison. What does it say? Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, 
but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us read those two verses again one more time. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word, for we are the heroes and by faith the doers on this afternoon. I need you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, come on, open up your mouth and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I just want to be saved. Come on, tell somebody else, say, neighbor, I don't know about you, I just want to be saved. Come on, put your hands together this afternoon if you feel that way. The Apostle Paul here is writing to us from the Philippian jail. This letter of the, to the churches in Philippi, uh, this book, this epistle, uh, is one that we know as a prison epistle. And it's Paul writing to us in bonds. Paul writing to us in shackles. Paul writing to us bound with chains in his hands and fetters around his feet. He's writing to us from a jail in uh, somewhere in Rome to his churches in Philippi. Writing because it was that church in Philippi that Paul founded in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts. Amen. You remember when Paul and Silas were in that jail. And the Bible says that they uh, were, uh, found themselves in a deplorable condition found themselves in a terrible condition in circumstances in which they were uh, had grown weary and perhaps some may see uh, some may say they were in a stressful environment amen it was in that stressful environment it was in that unfortunate situation when Paul and Silas had a mind change. Amen. There's nothing like trouble and the fire that comes with tests and trials to change an individual's mind. Amen. It was in that jail, you remember in Acts chapter 16 and verse 25 that the Bible says, and at midnight as Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. Amen. Can you see and imagine in your mind, if you will, amen, two men that were bound with chains around their wrists and bound with fetters around their ankles. Amen. Heads hung down. Unfortunate situation. Amen. Unlikely circumstances, but yet they found a way to open up their mouths and pray and sing praises unto God. Amen. And the Bible lets us know, thank God, that at around about midnight, as they began to pray, as they began to talk to God, as they began to sing praises unto God, the Bible says that the prisoners heard them and suddenly there was a shaking. Amen. There's nothing like the presence of God coming into an individual's life to shake things up and turn your world upside down. Amen. Somebody say, I want to change my life. You cannot change your life outside of the presence of God. Amen. Do I have a witness in the house today? Amen. It is the power of God. Thank God that comes from the presence of God. Amen. That has enough power to turn your world upside down. Amen. That's why you, thank God, will go to a, a church service and sit in a testimony service and, and hear the people of God all share the same sentiment, may not have the same background, may come from different circumstances, but amen, because they're in the church, they all share the same sentiment, and that is, I am not what I used to be. I do not look the way I used to look. I don't talk the way I used to talk. There's a change that has happened in my life, and I want you to know that change has come about as the result of the presence and power of God in an individual.
individual's life. Why don't you clap your hands and tell God, thank you if you share in those sentiments. Bible lets me know. Thank God that suddenly there was a shaking. Amen. And not just a shaking. Thank God that was felt by Paul and Silas. But it was a shaking that was felt. Amen. Across the entire prison. Not only did they hear them singing. Not only did they hear them pray. But they felt something. Amen. I come to let you know. Amen. If your prayers and your praise has not, amen, moved somebody. Amen. I come to tell you, you ain't doing nothing. Amen. But when you get in the presence of God, amen, nobody has to pump you and tell you to open up your mouth. When you get in the presence of God, nobody has to teach you how to pray. Nobody has to say, repeat after me. When you get in the presence of God, I come to tell you, somebody will feel it. Can I get a witness in this? Clap your hands and tell God, thank you. Tell him, thank you. Another time, I got to slow down here. Amen. But the Bible lets me know, amen, that the prisoners heard this and they felt the shaking. And not only did they hear it, and not only did they feel the shaking, but the Bible lets me know, amen, that everybody's bands were loose. Thank God the prison doors were shaking. Amen. The foundation of the prison was shaking. Amen. The doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. Now watch this now. That did not occur until Paul and Silas, amen, got together and started praying and started praising. I come to tell you, if you want somebody's life to be changed, if you want some doors to be open, if you want some chains to be loose, if you want some things to be turned around, you need to learn how to open up your mouth and give him a praise when it don't feel good to do it. Can I get a witness in this? If you want somebody to be set free, you need to lift up your hands. If you want somebody to jump, you need to loosen up your feet. If you want somebody to get blessed, you need to pray so God will open a door. Clap your hand and tell God thank you. There's power in it. Tell somebody there's power in it. There's something in about praise and prayer. There's something infectious about prayer and praise. I may as well tell you like this. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You can't walk up in church where there's prayer and praise going on and not leave set free. If you don't leave set free, that's on you. But I come to tell somebody we got a lot of work to do and it starts with the presence of God I don't know about you I'm not satisfied until God's presence has swept through the room can I get a witness in this I'm not satisfied until I can feel him put his hand on my shoulder I'm not satisfied with a good feeling I need a transformation. Clap your head and show glory. Show glory in this house. Y'all sit down, take your seat for a second. I got to move on in a hurry. But the Bible lets me know it is from this. It is that church in Philippi that Paul is writing to. Bound in chains. And shackles. I love this book. Love this epistle because Paul has a moment of transparency. Lord have mercy. This same Paul, Paul, this same Paul that had had a powerful salvation experience. Y'all remember what happened? Met him on the road to Damascus. Paul had a life changing salvation experience. Anybody in this room had a life changing salvation experience? Anybody in this room ever had God rock your world? Can I get a witness in this house? You know it was Paul. That same Paul who used to kill 
Christians. Paul wasn't just a murderer, but he was a mass murderer. He didn't just kill one or two here and there, but Paul killed dozens of Christians because they profess their adoration. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Come on and clap your hand and shout glory. Shout glory another time. You know Paul, that same Paul, and God that was a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, he was a Pharisee. That same Paul, thank God who consented to the death, thank God of Stephen, because he was preaching the gospel. Who do we have now? We have this man Paul, who was a mass murderer. He was Charlie Manson before Charlie Manson was Charlie Manson. He was Osama bin Laden before Osama bin Laden was Osama bin Laden. He was Harry. He was Jeffrey Dahmer. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. But isn't it wonderful how God can take somebody the caliber of Paul a mass murderer isn't it wonderful how God can take this man who killed Christians who destroyed the church who wreaked havoc on the kingdom of God isn't it wonderful how God can change him turn him around loosen up some screws do a work on the inside go to hammer and we're hammer amen put this together and put that together and then Paul come out a completely different person it's no wonder God can take an old drunker and turn him into a child of God it's no wonder God can take a rusty beat up old prostitute and beautify her with salvation it's no wonder God can take a dope pusher gang banger and turn him into a deacon how come to tell you that is the power of God and he can change your life clap your hand and shout glory shout glory another time anybody in this room been changed if you've been changed let me see your hand if you know you've been changed I'm not what I used to be I know I've been changed I used to be depressed wanted to take my life had to be hospitalized had to be institutionalized wasn't fit to live wasn't ready to die but one day Jesus one day Jesus one day Jesus one day Jesus somebody shout one day one day Jesus I don't know what your experience was one day Jesus wrapped his living arms around me one day Jesus put his hand on my lap one day Jesus one day I wish I had somebody in here that's ever been changed. I let the somebody say, I went to a meeting one night and my heart went right. But something got a hold of me. It was the Holy Ghost. Yes, it was. It was the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. <laughs> to move on in a hurry. but it was the same Paul the Bible lets me know sitting in the prison cell writing to the church in Philippi I having a moment of transparency I hear Paul saying I am in a street betwixt two what do you mean Paul I am of two minds right now now, on one hand, I'm ready to die. On one hand, I've done all I can do. On one hand, I think I'm about done. On the other hand, he that have begun a good work. 
working mirror shall perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. On one hand, I'm tired. On the other hand, I'm energized. On one hand, I want to give up. On the other hand, God's not through with me yet. On one hand, I'm tired of fighting. On the other hand, I ain't got started yet. On one hand, I feel like quitting. On the other hand, how dare I quit? Anybody ever been a little schizophrenic with your face? One day you want to quit. The next day you pray a prayer. One day you want to get up. The next day you're ready to move forward. How come to tell somebody that's where Paul was at? And the Bible tells me his writing. Thank God to his church. Can I get somebody to cut your hand and shout glory? Shout glory another time. And the Bible tells me that Paul was here trying to encourage the church and at the same time encouraging himself. And the Bible tells me as I get ready to close now how that Paul acknowledges after all I've been through. I went through it all, all of my hurt, all of my pain, all of my tears, that I may know God and the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his sufferings. Anybody want to know him? Anybody want to have fellowship? Anybody want to be close to him? Let me see your hands but that ain't all what Paul said he said after all I've done after all I've been through preached in this city preached in that city healed the blind cast down devils after all I've been through I have not arrived yet but I lead don't think and I push forward to those things that are before and I press toward the marker what are you saying Paul I just want to be saved whatever happens to me let it happen I just want to be saved come hell or high water just want to be saved clap your hand and shout glory I just want to be saved I just want to be saved after all that goes on in our lives All that we have to put up with. All that we have to go through. At the end of the day, you need to have the mindset, I just want to be saved. Because when your mind is made up, there's nothing more powerful than a made up mind. That's why David sat down and picked up the pen one day and said, my heart is fixed, oh God. My heart is fixed. My mind is made up. I just want to be saved. After the tests and the trials, after the battles and the victories, after the mountains and the valleys, I just want my I just want to see that that God, that person, that man who shall change my vile body and fashion it like under his glorious body. Tell somebody I just want to be saved. 
We don't have enough of that attitude. Not enough of that sentiment. That's why folks have a hard time coming to church. They say there's hypocrites in the church. I told somebody, there's hypocrites in the club too. If that's how you measure whether or not what you do, if that's how, what informs your decision, there's hypocrites in the club too. Strip club, she don't love you. She's trying to get all your money. But we need to have a mind, an attitude, resolve that says, I just want to be saved. No matter what happens, no matter what I've got to go through, the saved life is the best life. I am convinced of that. The saved life is the best life. <clears throat> It doesn't mean that you won't have problems. It doesn't mean that you won't have difficult times. Look, you're going to have difficult times whether you're saved or not. You're going to have problems whether you're saved or not. But there's nothing like facing down a problem with Jesus standing behind your back. Oh, thank you. There's nothing like going through the storms of life knowing that Jesus is riding on board. There's nothing like the peace and the comfort that comes with knowing I'm safe in his arms and that he will not allow just anything to happen to me. The Bible says, what shall I render unto the Lord for all of his benefits? There are benefits that comes with serving God. There are benefits that come with walking with God. Being under his divine protection. Under his divine providence. Being able to rely on God and not having to rely on yourself or your own skills or your own knowledge or your own ability. Being able to be blessed in spite of you. There's benefits that comes with walking with Jesus. There's benefits that come with having God on your side. I can't imagine what my life, how my life would have turned out had I not had Jesus in my life. He's done things for me. Songwriter said, I cannot tell it all. You see, people look at you and they see the blessings and they see how God has has blessed you, but they don't know what God has done for you. People look at us, they see, they see the car, they see the, the bands that bling, they see the, but you don't know. We've had our lights turned off. We've been in the dark. We we've been on food stamps. We've begged others for their food stamps. We, we've had eviction notices paced to the front, uh, front of our door. We've struggled. We've dealt with cancer. Bank, nearly bankrupted us. You, you look at the, the blessings now, but you don't know God has blessed us. He's brought us from a mighty long way. I've been out of work. Not, I'm not, not presently, thank the Lord, I have a job now. I was out of work for almost two years. And God sustained us. Had not one but two vehicles repossessed. But when Amber got ready to go get that Lincoln, that didn't stop her. Because see, when you, you may have bad credit with the world, but if you've got good credit with God, that's all that matters. <laughs> Two vehicles repossessed. I walked in the car lot and said, I want to, I want to get that Benz. They said, Brother Johnson, you've had two vehicles repossessed. Yeah, but I, I still want that Benz. 
when you have good credit with God, it don't matter what they tell you. I might preach a message one time, but they said, they said you unapproved, but God said you approved. They said you can't make it, but God said you can make it. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. At the end of the day, God has done too much for all of us for us to not have the attitude, I just want to be saved. I just want to please God. I just want to walk with God. Let her go. Let him go. Let it go. Let that go. At the end of the day, I just want to be saved. And if there's anybody this afternoon that has that mindset, you want to give your life to God. The saved life.